Hello, and welcome to Mel Make Stuff. My name is Melissa, and today I want to talk to you about all of my projects that I currently have going. It's the end of 2020, and going into 2021, one of my goals is to finish as many of these projects as possible. I have all different kinds of projects going on right now. I have knitting, crochet, machine sewing, hand sewing, and also one cross-stitch project. And of all of these, there is only one that I expect to last longer than 2021. So I'm hoping to get all of these done in this upcoming calendar year. So I wanted to make a little journal entry, if you will, of all of the projects that I currently have going to hold myself accountable, see where things currently are so that I can look back and feel hopefully some sort of satisfaction at having finished most of them or all of them, and also share that sort of journey with you throughout the year. So I've assembled all of my existing projects right here on the table behind me so I can show them to you. The first knitting project that I want to show you would be done, and it would have been done a long time ago if I could just get my act together like a little tiny bit. This is the Sunset Dunes pattern by Yumiko Alexander, who also has the yarn company Dando Yarn. And so I used the recommended yarn for this, which was the Silk Plus. It's a sport weight silk and cotton mix, and I have really enjoyed working with the yarn. It's like um, a very crispy feeling, uh, very dry feeling yarn, but it is going to make a really nice summer top. And so you can see the shape of this is sort of unusual. The asymmetrical hem is caused by these tuck stitches here on the right that just pull the fabric up a little bit. So you actually knit in the round. There's no short rows or anything here, but because the fabric is tucked just on this side, it creates this asymmetrical hem, which is sort of nice. The rest of the body of this is really plain. And so I knit this a long time ago. <laughs> like this really could have been done like four or five months ago. The neckline is done. Uh, the hem is done. There's a nice folded hem and a folded neckline. And so the only thing that still needs to be done is that I have to set the sleeves in. And I have even knitted and blocked both sleeves, but I just need to sew them in and that's it. So I think this is probably going to be my first project of 2021 to be finished because I will easily be able to check it off and then hopefully get on a roll with finishing things. Um, I have no idea why it has taken me so long to finish this one, but you know how it is. Like, I get to a point where if something needs to be sewn, then I'm like, oh, no thanks. Like, I haven't set in sleeves in a knitted garment in a while, so maybe I'll just wait a little bit and then the thing sits for like half a year. My next knitting project, which thankfully I think is getting closer to being done, is the Yell sweater by Marie Wallen. I know a lot of people have all of a sudden started making this, which is interesting. I think I started this back in April, and I've sort of gone through spurts of working on it. I was having an issue with my left hand hurting a little bit, so I was having to take more breaks than I would have wanted to, but this thing got me through like the majority of the election coverage <laughs> where I was just watching TV for like 20 hours a day because I was so freaked out about what was gonna happen. I got a large amount of this done, but then I started having second thoughts about the shape of it. So let me just show you what I have so far. I have the majority of the body done. And so the way that you make this sweater is that it's knit in the round from the bottom up and then you steek for both the front and for the armholes, and then you knit sleeves and sew the sleeves in. And so around probably here, I was questioning whether I wanted to actually make the sleeves as written because the sleeves also have this long color work bit here um, at the bottom of the sleeves. And so while I like the look of that, even though it is a lot of look, um, I have really short arms and so I often have to shorten sleeves, which is not really a problem, but when there is going to be a big color work uh, chart at the bottom of the sleeve, on a normal length arm, that chart would probably hit in an okay place. Um, but on me, it might come up to, I would say at least to where my arm bends or maybe even higher. And then the proportions are probably, I'm anticipating, just going to look a little bit weird once the sleeves are sewn into the sweater. So I'm debating right now about whether I should add sleeves at all or whether I should just keep it a vest. And I'm leaning towards keeping it a vest, but I have a while to decide because I still have to knit the entire front bands. So 
I'm at the point where I'm about to start a little bit of shoulder shaping and bind off. So the body is almost done. And then I'm going to steek, so cut the front open, and then I'll knit the, the bands. So it's a open front, there's no closure or anything, and there is a rather thick colorwork band to do. So I think I'm going to do that and then make a decision about what to do about the sleeves. And I forgot to say, the yarns I'm using for this is just an assortment of stuff from my stash. I think there are 12 colors in this pattern, and so I chose 12 yarns that I had in my stash. And the way that I sort of played around with deciding what yarns to use was by looking at the original pattern and I sort of separated the yarns out into light, medium, dark. And I tried to keep that in mind as I was choosing yarns out of my stash so that the contrast would still be there um, that you need in those colorwork bands to be able to see the actual patterns. I'm going to be doing a finished object video for the yell when I'm done with it, so I'll explain a little bit more about that like later on. It will be sometime this year, <laughs> whenever it's done. The third knitting project I have is the Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit. And I started this thinking that it was going to be a quick project, and it is just not going to be um, for a variety of reasons. I started it in December, like just this month. It's December 2020. I started it a couple weeks ago. Um, we recently moved to this new house and it's freezing. And so I realized that I don't have actually that many sweaters that are meant for truly, truly cold weather, like really thick, lopy type sweaters. And so I wanted to make this Wednesday sweater with a combination of Peace Fleece, Aran, uh, I think they call it worsted, but it is for sure Aran, I would say maybe even heavier than that. And so I'm holding the piece fleece together with a yak silk merino singles yarn that I have in my stash. And I'm doing that both to warm it up a little bit because the yak is really warm and also to tone down the color of the piece fleece just a little bit. So let me show you the two yarns. So this is the piece fleece. It's uh, the Lauren's Coral colorway, and it is a little bit too orangey of a coral for me, um, for my preference. I sometimes like that, but I don't know. Uh, it was just feeling a little bit too orange for me. So I am holding it with this. Yeah, so this is the natural color of the Yak Silk, and it's this sort of very light silvery gray, and that is from the Yak. And it's got a little bit of sheen to it from the silk. And so it is toning down the piece fleece just a little bit. So seeing the colors together here, side by side, and here is how they're working up. So you can see it's like a little bit less just bright. Um, the, the natural single is toning the color down a little bit. This is my first petite knit garment pattern. I've made one of her hat patterns before, but I like the construction. It's a top-down pattern. And so originally I was just going to make it as written and have a nice warm sweater, but now I'm sort of debating whether to make it like a dress length or at least a tunic length, because I do have a lot of the piece fleece in my stash and I sort of just want to use it up. So what I have done is I had gotten to this point in the body, like halfway down the body, um, and I ran out of the piece fleece and was going to need to add another skein. And so I decided to stop on the body and instead go and do the neckline and I'll do the sleeves as well. And then that way I can just keep going on the body. I don't have to worry about like calculating how much yarn I need if I want to use up what I have. So we'll see. This project that was supposed to take like a couple weeks is now like who knows when it's going to be done. The other thing that I have to consider with this project is that I can't knit on it for very long without feeling a little bit of hand and wrist pain. I think it's like the, the needles are a little bit larger than I am used to knitting with and the gauge is actually pretty tight for the yarn. So it's making this really thick fabric which is going to be nice but it's also a little bit hard on the hands for now. So I am limiting myself to a certain number of rows on this per day. So who knows when this is going to be finished. My other two knitting projects are both blankets. So the first one is the Radvent Throw by Amba O'Brien. And it's a bunch of different squares. It's meant to be made with a yarn advent calendar with the 20 gram mini skeins. And so each one of these squares is taking about 15 grams, which is sort of convenient because then I'm using my other five grams for my other project. But it's just a simple lace 
square. And again, I am holding that same Yak single together with all of the mini skein colors. So it's blending the colors a little bit. And I think everything is going to look really nice when it's, I think, eventually crocheted together. I think that's what happens with this one. I have six squares done so far, and the yarns that I've used for these are just either mini skeins from last year's advent calendar. I had the Hue Loco advent last year, and then um, there's a couple other like random odds and ends skeins in here. And so now I have my this year's advent calendar, which was the Stress Knits advent. And so now I have all 24 of those to go. So the pattern called for 24 squares, but I wanted my blanket to be a little bit bigger because I just have no use for like blankets that are too skinny. So um, I've made these six. And so now for the rest of the year, I'm gonna try to knit three squares per month using the other skeins from my other advent. And that way this will be done within, you know, three quarters of the year, and then I'll have the remainder of the year to crochet everything together and finish it. And that brings me to my last knitting project, which is the one that I don't think is going to get finished this year, just because I don't have enough mini skeins, and I don't want any more mini skeins. I already have too many, and I don't need, like, any more mini skeins or scraps or anything like that coming into my life. So I, my plan for this blanket, uh, well, let me show it to you. So this is not very big, as you can see. It's the, um, I don't know, my sister calls it the Cozy Memories blanket, but I don't know what the actual name for it is. The, the pattern that I have linked in my project page for this Unravelry is not the correct pattern for what I'm actually doing. I don't know what I was thinking. I started this back in, I think, 2017, um, but it's been going on since then. Like, I'll get bored with it and drop it, and then I'll pick it up again if I have. It's good stress knitting. Like, um, you don't have to think about anything when you're doing it, but I wrote down in my Ravelry project notes what I did for each square so that both, so that I can remember and so that people know if they want to check it out. Um, so obviously this is not very big, but my plan for this blanket is to, um, to take the remainders of each advent square that I'm doing for the other blanket and put them in here. So, um, that in combination with whatever other scraps I have from fingering weight projects that I finished this year, um, those all are going to go into here. So I estimate I'll maybe have 30-ish more squares added to this by the end of the year, which is, you know, I need like 400 more squares to have this be a reasonable size. So it's, this is going to be ongoing for probably a number of years still. So that's it for knitting. I'll show you my one crochet project now. So this is the Acre Sweater by Judith Brand. It was in one of the more recent issues of Pom Pom, maybe like within the last year or so. And it's a crochet sweater. And so I sort of got turned on to this project from Christy Glass, who was doing like a knit along or crochet along for it. And I got this idea to use these weird, <laughs> these yarns from my stash that don't actually go together. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about this color combo because it is odd. Um, I hope that these colors end up coming across on camera, but I have a pink, uh, which is my hand dyed yarn up here. I have a green, like mint green stress knits yarn. And this is a red and orange variegated um, Mount Rutzen yarn that I got at my very first Rhinebeck a couple years ago. This crochet intarsia technique is really interesting and also easy to do. It's a little bit irritating to have three balls of yarn floating around. Um, for the period of time that that happens, but what are you gonna do? The front and back of this are done, and I stopped because I just needed to do the sleeves. And so now I'm a little bit worried because this has been sitting for some time, like many months. And I'm not really a super avid crocheter. Like I, I'll usually have one crochet project going, but I intermittently work on it. And so my gauge isn't necessarily going to stay consistent. I'm a little bit worried about that because this uses a rather tiny hook as well. And so I had originally stopped working on this because the sleeves, I was worried about the sleeve length. Like I mentioned earlier, my arms are sort of short 
And so I was thinking that I was going to have to figure out how to shorten the sleeves. The problem is that the sleeves for this pattern are actually crocheted from side to side. So you, I think you start at the wrist and then crochet long ways and you do short rows to shape the upper arm so the upper arm is bigger. And so it's not like I could just start crocheting and then just stop whenever I needed to stop the sleeve. So thinking about how to calculate how to shorten the sleeve in that sort of side to side construction was really putting me off. But as I recently realized with my Favo sweater, um, for patterns that are drop shoulder, I think I don't need to worry about the sleeves being too short because my upper body, my, um, my shoulders are broad for my bust size. And so with a drop shoulder, if it fit like somebody with normal size shoulders for their bust shape, the drop comes down a lot farther than on me because I have these broad shoulders. So while I ordinarily for sweaters might need to shorten the sleeve, um, for a drop shoulder, I might not actually need to be so worried about that. I think what I'm gonna do for this one is to just go ahead and crochet the sleeves as they're written and also cross my fingers that this works. <laughs> so there is also a crocheted cuff that is crocheted around the wrist. So I figured like worst case scenario, if what I discovered on my Favo sweater happens again with this one where I actually need to lengthen the sleeves, when it comes time to do the crochet cuff, I'll just crochet the cuff a little bit longer and hopefully everything will work out. For my one cross stitch project, I really have not worked on this in a long time. I have to really be in the mood to work on cross stitch and I'm just rarely in the mood for it. But um, if you are sensitive to swearing, um, close your eyes. I'm not gonna read this out loud, but um, I'm gonna hold it up. I think I bought this pattern on Etsy. I will, if it's still available, I'll link it below. But um, the entire thing is done in this like old school cross stitch sampler way and the fact that that is the text I just find to be completely hilarious. So I would like to get this finished this year so that I can hang it up in my new house. Um, and I think that should be doable if I make a priority to work on it. We'll see. I have two hand sewing projects and the one I'm about to show you I thought I was a lot further along on and it turns out I'm not so that's a little bit depressing. <laughs> this is the Alabama Channon Palazzo Pants pattern and so anybody who is familiar with Alabama Channon is gonna know what I'm about to show you. Uh, it's an epic amount of work for a pair of pants. This has been a labor of love so far, so I really need to just continue with it. The process for making one of these Alabama Channon garments is typically that you, um, using a stencil, will airbrush fabric paint, uh, whatever design you want, onto your fabric. And then you layer two layers of fabric together, quilt them, essentially, around the design. And there's an infinite number of ways you could do that. And then you can also cut one of the layers of fabric away for different effects. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, so I created this stencil, airbrushed the fabric, and um, have been working on quilting this. This is one piece out of four, and I am not anywhere near done with this first piece. So that's really, I don't, I feel like I was working on this forever at the beginning of the year, so I don't, I sort of don't know how this happened. But this is, I think, let's see. I think this is one of the front leg pieces. So this is also one of the smaller pieces. Uh, the back legs are, are bigger than this. The fabric paint on the top layer is metallic, which is really pretty. Um, and the top layer of fabric is like a dark blue and the under layer of fabric is black. So I'm using black thread to do the quilting. And then I'm cutting off the top blue layer of fabric around where I quilted. So when they're done, they're going to appear mostly black with just this little bit of blue around each leaf where I quilted. And I'm leaving the knots on the outside of the garment just for a little bit of additional texture. I really like the look of that in all of my hand quilting. And so that is that. I. This is gonna take more time than I thought. I was hoping to have these done sort of in the first half of 2021. And I don't know if that's gonna happen, but we'll, I guess we'll see. Um, 
my other hand sewing project now I think is a little bit further along so I might try to just prioritize that and get it finished so that I'm not working trying to work on two quilting projects at the same time so let me show you that one my other current hand sewing project is my very first quilt and so I machine sewed the actual blocks together like the piecing the blocks or whatever uh, I did with the machine but for all of the quilting I really just don't like the look of machine quilting. Um, I grew up around a lot of hand, completely handmade quilts. It was like my grandmother's thing. And so I'm used to seeing that real handmade, hand-stitched look for quilting. And I just can't, I don't know, I can't get into machine quilting at this point at least. I machine pieced and now I'm hand quilting the entire thing. And of course that's taking some amount of time. Um, I started this, I guess in, mid 2019 so it hasn't been going on for that long and I've really only worked on it I would say for a couple months like consistently throughout that time period like I'll really get into quilting for a while and then it will just completely go by the wayside so I just want to show you a little detail of this all of the fabrics that I'm using for this are from Pearl Soho uh, the light pink linen which is sort of the main color that goes through all the blocks it's like a super pale pink, just a plain, plain linen. And all of the others are metallic linen. And that metallic linen I got in a fat quarter bundle. So they offer, I, I don't even remember how many colors there were because this was a while ago, maybe 16 colors or so. But it's all neutrals. Um, grays and blacks and golds and things like that. This is just like a basic star pattern quilt. So for half of the blocks I used the light pink linen as like the main color, like the, the star color, and then for the other half of the blocks I used assorted metallic linens for the star. I'm using like a medium brown color for the quilting and what I'm finding is that it is really difficult to quilt some of the metallic fabrics by hand. And so what I'm doing for now is quilting only the pink linen sections. There's enough of those sections that I think this is going to be reasonably well quilted and held together. But what I would like to get done this year is to just quilt all of the light pink sections and put the binding on. And then if I feel like I wanna go back and quilt all of those metallic sections after that, then I can do that like at a later time and not worry about it. So here you can see how many squares I have left to go. There's really not all that much left to do here, but I have gone through and put a little piece of painter's tape on each square that still needs to have some quilting done on it, just because with a quilt of this size, I mean, this isn't a particularly large quilt, but I just have a hard time seeing sometimes what I've done and what I haven't. I'm not using any sort of hoop or stand or anything like that to do this quilting. I prefer to hold it in my lap and just manipulate it, um, which is probably not the most efficient thing to do, but I find it to be the most comfortable for right now. This is my first ever quilt and it was my first experience hand quilting as well. So who knows how my process will evolve in the future. Okay, I only have two more whips left and they are both machine sewing projects. So these should be hopefully quick to get done, but again, you never know. The first one is a plantain tea by Deer and Doe. So this is a free pattern that they offer. I don't know if you have to sign up for a newsletter or anything like that, but I downloaded it a long time ago. And this has sort of been my go-to for t-shirt pattern. The fabric that I have for this is like this sort of um, goth, uh, like skull and bones and feathers. And you know, it's a little bit dramatic fabric. So um, that should be relatively easy to put together just as soon as I get around to it. And my final thing that is a work in progress is a Wixton Howery that I cut a, again, a long time ago. Like it could have even been pre 2020, maybe. I know I've had this fabric for a while. And so the thing that has sort of sidelined me on this project is that I realized that I need to cut a smaller size. And I'm glad that I realized that before I started sewing, but now I have the pieces cut out for, I think I cut out the small and I need, I realized that I actually need the extra small or something like that. I have these pieces cut out, but now I'm gonna have to like dig my pattern out and retrace the pattern pieces because I never cut my patterns. So I'm gonna have to retrace all those pattern pieces and then like recut 
these. So I've been debating whether I could in theory just sew this with a larger seam allowance so that it will end up smaller, but I, I'm not entirely sure that I've thought through all of the repercussions of doing that. Um, this pattern is very much like a low waist type pattern. I don't know if it's actually marketed that way, but it's like big square shapes. And so I think it's possible to do that, but I need to think about it a little more and it would really, it would be safer if I would just retrace and recut um, or cut these pieces down a little bit. The other thing is that these two fabrics are a little bit wacky together. Um, I mean, I've cut the pieces, so we're sort of like going with it. Um, and I, I like a little bit of wackiness, but they are a little crazy. So let me, let me just show you. So here are these two fabrics together. The one with the yellow is going to be the main color or the, the main fabric, the outside of the coat, and the black and white one is going to be the inside. But the way this pattern is constructed, if I remember correctly, is that the, um, the inside, the lining fabric, will show on the lapels and on the sleeves if you roll them up. This is going to be a loud coat, and I'm okay with that. I really just want to make sure that I do this main fabric justice because I really love this fabric. And so I think this is going to be a little crazy, but I... I think it'll be cool. I, I really need to get on this one. Huh. All right, that's a lot. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired and I haven't even started working on any of these. <laughs> Thank you for letting me show you all of that. Thank you for keeping me accountable in this upcoming year. Um, I really got to get started working on some of this stuff now. And I uh, hope everyone's doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.